While he's uh, setting that up, I can quickly introduce our group as the Rebel Alliance. <laughs> we weren't really an officially sanctioned group, <laughs> but <laughs> we just, all of us have an interest in urban issues, urban quality of life issues, and getting city administrators and municipalities to make more citizen-centric decisions. And so we kind of organically came together. The folks represented uh, in this group include IIT Bombay, uh, Ashoka University, uh, Microsoft Research, and uh, Lakir, which is an urban governance nonprofit that I run. Um, why does it matter to us so much um, whether uh, city administrators are making good quality decisions or not? Uh, the context is that it, India has actually already <laughs> become an urban country. Uh, this is not officially recognized yet in government records, but when you look at satellite data, Depending on how you cut it, about 55% to 78% of India is already urban, and we're growing very, very rapidly. 1,800 Indians move to a city every hour in search of better opportunities. And uh, often the quality of life that they meet in these cities um, are not up to mark. And that's because the folks who run these cities are municipalities, basically. They're under-resourced and under-capacitated, um, and are uh, not really in a place where they can make good, um, smart decisions about where to prioritize their limited budgets. Um, <clears throat> so so uh, a kind of common area of interest between uh, the work that IIT Bombay has been doing, Ashoka University has been doing, and Lakir has been doing, is that uh, data-driven decision-making can really improve this current state of being uh, of, of affairs and, and lead to more equitable uh, quality of life. Um, but the, uh, the, the question is really, where is the data? Um, and all of us were kind of inspired by the work that uh, Professor Ganesh presented yesterday, talking about grievance data, because it then struck us that actually grievance data is, is some data that's available across all urban areas in India, with, especially with populations more than 25,000. Uh, this data is somewhat real time. It's collected by government agencies as well as by the private sector. Um, and it's, it's refreshed at a regular rate, and it's also available back in the past, going back at least three, four years. Um, What's unfortunate is that today this data is basically used as a sort of to-do list. So I can show you what it looks like. Uh, this is uh, all of the grievances received by the city of Hyderabad in the last one month. And basically the way that the city uses this data is treats in each individual point as one item to mark off on a to-do list, saying this complaint came in and we acted on it. There's nothing else done beyond that. And uh, the questions we started asking ourselves in the group yesterday is, what if we could do more with this data? What if we could analyze this data to figure out where to prioritize our resources in a little more intelligent way? And to give you an example of why that is needed, for a city like Hyderabad, the annual municipal budget per citizen per year is only 800 rupees. So exactly equal distribution of this money will get us exactly nowhere. So that prioritization is needed. Uh, the second, what if we could cross-tabulate this grievance data with other data sets like uh, budgets, like tenders, to figure out if there are some underlying patterns to why these grievances are coming up in the first place, um, and therefore maybe prevent them from happening with better urban planning. Um, and, the, and the third is, uh, what if we could predict hotspots uh, in space as well as in time of where grievances are more likely to occur, so that uh, the limited number of government personnel that, that do exist can be deployed more effectively. But there are barriers to getting there. Uh, the first, uh, and a lot of these Professor Ganesh spoke about, so I'm going to go through this quickly. So data is not properly geolocated. It is of inconsistent quality. People use different words from across different languages, different sentiments to describe the same problem. Uh, the data is not interlinked. So in the same city, grievance data will be reported to multiple government agencies, multiple private agencies, and there's no one common place where all of this comes and rests. Um, social media data is not being collated, even though there are a lot of government agencies in India now that actively respond to complaints on Twitter. Like many of you will be familiar with uh, the Mumbai police as a good example of that. Uh, big, big ethical problem. Uh, grievance data relies on uh, people to have agency to report, whether it's through uh, the web or through phone calls. And uh, that tends to be predominantly in areas that are better off versus low-income uh, locations. So there's a huge bias problem. Uh, and then finally, multimodal data analysis is not done. Because uh, for instance, in Hyderabad, about 40% of the complaints that come in come in via phone. Um, and that speech is not analyzed separately. So where does AI come in? And again, Professor Ganesh spoke about some of this when it comes to 
augmenting and organizing the grievance database. So um, understanding the complaints, uh, uh, separating signals from noise is one potential area. And just to give you a scale of the, the number of complaints that annually come in for a uh, city such as Bangalore or Hyderabad, we're looking at annually about half a million individual complaints. Uh, so this is not something that, that can be manually done. Um, there is uh, the, the problem of kind of figuring out what people are saying versus what they actually mean. And we saw this example yesterday uh, when Professor described the problem of uh, cows on the road versus how people actually report it. Uh, there's a problem of a lot of vernacular data that's typed in English and then can't be analyzed. Um, and there's uh, a lot of analysis that goes missing in terms of you know, which entity the problem is being reported about and what is actually the nature of the problem. Summarization of the data that's coming in. Um, the other issue that uh, OVC AI could pot potentially help with is give us richer insights through cross-tabbing. Uh, this is an example of that. So three different data sets have been combined here. So the red dots that you see are individual grievances of uh, water logging when it rains. Uh, the terrain map along with these streams is basically a watershed analysis to show what parts of the city are likely to flood when it rains. And the black dots that you see are basically rehabilitation centers that have been identified for this city for where citizens should be relocated if there is flooding. And, and one thing that crops up is a lot of the rehabilitation centers are actually located in areas which are going to flood. So insights like this come out more obviously when there is cross-tabbing of data. Um, we see huge potential to, for example, bring in a lot of information from open street maps, layer this on top of the grievance data, and find such patterns. Uh, so the project that we would like to scope out, um, and it's, it's still very much exploratory. It's not, not as concrete as some of the other teams that have uh, presented, because like I said, we came together quite organically. Uh, but basically, in the first three months, we want to focus on uh, developing base maps for urban areas. So get some common data sets in place in terms of the jurisdictions, roads, boundaries, what are the public assets. Uh, we want to develop some standards around geolocations that can be adapted across the partners that at least we are working with. So for example, between us, we're working with four city municipalities and uh, three private sector uh, organizations that source grievance data. Uh, automate the data categorization and uh, summarization and begin predicting what are likely hotspots of grievances. From there, what we want to do is uh, move on to cross-tabbing this data with other potential uh, data sets like jurisdictions, budgets, tenders. One question that uh, we asked in our group is what if we could take the potholes database, put it on top of the tenders database, and find a link between the contractors who are building the roads that have more potholes again and again, and so they could be penalized. Um, figure out if there's a way to do more intelligent prioritization of the geographies of focus um, and the issues of focus. And uh, finally, in, six uh, uh, in the last six months, get to multimodal analysis across multiple data sources, so not just text, but also image and audio. Um, and look, if it's look at if it's possible to do some uh, decentralized action around grievances, so not everything needs to necessarily reroute back to the government for action. Some things could come to civil society organizations. Some things could go to uh, citizen groups. And uh, because we didn't have an NGO at the center of it all, we had to come and kind of come up with who the potential implementation partners are. So what we're thinking right now is that IIT Bombay will take a lead on automating the grievance database uh, augmentation and organization. And from that, surfacing what are some actionable insights. What we'll do at Lagir is uh, uh, get focused on cross-tabbing this grievance data with other data sets that could be scrapped or RTI'd from the government. Uh, and Ashoka University will basically focus more on uh, municipal works and testing products through uh, the chief minister's good governance associate fellows. And the test beds that we're prioritizing for this are the municipalities in Mumbai, uh, Bangalore, and Hyderabad. And that brings me to the end of the presentation. Yeah. Pay for it. My, as in, like, yeah, it's a 
great question. I'll also let Professor Ganesh comment. For the government data that comes in, that's how it works. There's a call center. Yeah. I think so the private sector guys may not be able to afford it. Yes. Uh, besides the point of not being able to afford, uh, I think even if them, some AI is used to clean up the, uh, the, the audio that comes in, uh, and, and basically bootstrap around the user feedback. Those are repetitive uh, corrections that are made by the, uh, or re repetitive uh, patterns that emerge in the process of transcription by a human. Can that be at least automated by, uh, um, and this is our experience with this project at IIT Bombay called Spoken Tutorial, uh, where a lot of, uh, there's a lot of speech data and text. Uh, and we realize that the very com common accentuated patterns that could be actually captured through AI. So I, I agree, the most reliable thing will to be to get a human. But uh, can we get an AI to assess the human? And uh, there was also one other project by IBM called Spoken Web uh, that also did uh, tag a certain text from the verbal uh, calls that have made. I'm not sure whether you guys are aware of, but it allowed you to search uh, through a particular word uh, and then you can search the whole uh, voice database. Unfortunately, that project is over. I don't know whether yeah. IBM is actually taking it. Began, it began when I left IBM research. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so yes. I know Nitendra and all, they were uh, working on to it, so. I was just saying that we kind of see this as a phase two of Venter. For all of the things we've been talking about, there are some individual pieces of code that all three of us have been anyway putting in the public domain. So we're trying to see through this now how all of that can come together and become something greater. Yeah. 